All right, guys, we have our one slide slideshow man here. Uh, it's going to be all him, no visuals, but you know what? With Palto, that's enough. That's enough for me. So uh, he's going to be talking with us about KYC, AML, cryptocurrency stuff. For those of you who have been in the space for any significant portion of time, you've heard that comes up often. If you don't know what it is, he'll probably tell you. He'll probably kind of go deep in depth. By the end of this, you will be the, the, the most knowledgeable person on the subject for probably a 3,000-mile radius. So I'm going, to hand this, um, I'm going to hand this over to him. Thanks, Paul. So let's, give him a, let's give him a hand. Thanks. Thank you. So yeah, a quite boring topic probably, uh, crypto anti-money laundering. Uh, but um, it's really something that uh, I'm observing since a long time and uh, it hurts me to see what's going on in this area. So um, I, uh, I just finished a workshop on this uh, topic. So the, the workshop is not really finished. It's an ongoing workshop during the entire CCC. So you can find me at the uh, at the Swiss Crypto Economics uh, Assembly there at the end. And uh, if you come to, to me and uh, say that you're interested in the topic, it's an ongoing workshop, so you're welcome to, to participate. So uh, the idea here is uh, uh, first, what's, what's uh, wrong with this uh, crypto AML? So for those who are not familiar, IML is anti-money laundering. It's what uh, financial intermediaries are legally obliged uh, to check on you uh, to understand that your transactions are legit and that uh, you did not participate into any money laundering or fin financement of terrorism. Uh, but at the same time, the governments uh, want this to be, to be, uh, how to say, to be to have a high enough barrier for money launderers to enter, but uh, for normal people, uh, they should be able to transact easily without uh, uh, too much difficulties. So um, why, uh, why we should care about uh, what's going on um, as, a, as a community? Because I think there is a lot of misinterpretation of the the regulation and the technology in this area is going a little bit too far, in my opinion. So, um, if we compare what's, uh, what the financial intermediaries are doing in the traditional finance to what they are trying to push in the crypto world, it's, uh, it seems to me very different. For example, uh, chain analysis tries to try to construct the entire history of your uh, transaction of the coins that you have. Uh, and take them as drug money or whatever money. Uh, you all probably know that the, the paper bills we, we have, like the euros or whatever, they all have cocaine particles on it because people use it for different purposes. Uh, but somehow we decided not to put this in a sp spectrum analyzer that say, oh, cocaine, and take this as drug money and uh, put it out of economy. Uh, so, somehow, uh, the, the economists, the governments were wise enough to not go so deep. We have the technology for this. These uh, bills, they all have serial numbers. So, it's technically possible to, to track them down to each individual transaction, but they don't do it for, for good reasons, because it would be destructive for the economy, it would be destructive for the for the society, so they don't try to go so far. But for some reason, with, um, with crypto, they try to implement this. So a lot of this, I think, is coming from uh, technical people reading regulation that are written in uh, like legal and uh, financial wording and interpret them. Um, a lot also is coming from this belief that uh, um, that because uh, with the blockchain we can follow every transaction, we should do this, while n never in any law article it says this. Um, so this is, uh, this to me, it's the problem. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to do with the workshop is to 
is to build tools, open source, uh, free software tools that financial intermediaries, but also people, individuals could use to provide proofs and to verify proofs, cryptographic proofs of origin of funds. So uh, also a, a kind of shock for the traditional financial intermediaries is the in the crypto space we are like be your own bank but be your own bank also mean that you are your own uh, compliance and you you only check what coins you accept what coins you don't accept and when you issue a payments you are supposed to provide a proof also to other financial intermediaries and the traditional intermediaries they don't know how to deal with proofs issued by individuals they are used to like a, a bank director plus another employee of the bank who manually signs some uh, some paper that say this money is legit uh, coming from this uh, source and blah 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 so they are used to this and they know that the director of the bank will go to jail if he he do something wrong here you are your own bank and you can provide this cryptographic signature on your own so this is a little bit of shock to them. On the other hand, we technical people, we understand that the, the paper with signatures can be easily uh, uh, photoshopped or modified in many different ways. And that the cryptographic proof is mathematical proof that can be verified and that will like basically verify or fail. So there is no like, mm, 50% certainty or something like that. It doesn't exist. So I think we can do a lot uh, by uh, providing the right set of tools. So uh, the workshop is uh, about what tools we are using now. I'm working for a financial intermediary. So uh, we use these kind of tools. So I'm explaining what we are using today, what we lack today. Uh, and the, the goal of the ongoing workshop is to uh, create a set of tools. Probably I want to, to build an association that will be a legal entity in Switzerland, a non-profit association that will be uh, just behind these tools to, to go talk to the other financial intermediaries and to promote these tools. A lot of them already exist. It's uh, basically the, the main tool is a wallet that can sign a, a message with your private key so this already prove ownership over the the wallet so this is the the core the main uh, functionality then we use um, blockchain explorers to see the all of the transactions uh, that came to this uh, address signed by this private key so many of the tools already exist some of them need to be built some of them exist but only as a as a web service let's say like public blockchain explorers so we need to push more open source blockchain explorers that can be uh, run on a self-hosted uh, uh, server uh, because every time as a financial intermediary i'm looking not on the blockchain, not on the blockchain copy that I have on my own full note, but on a blockchain explorer, I am of course exposing customers' information, private customers' information, and I am exposing it to this uh, public web service. So, uh, some, many, many, in fact, of the of the software needed already exists. We just need to package it and to to do a lot of. Uh, a lot of communication and a lot of education to to say that oh you don't need chain analysis to red red or green flag you need some tools that enable you to understand the history of the transaction and to accept either refuse a transaction so uh, please come to me at the Swiss crypto economics assembly if you want to to talk about this if you have ideas or software that you would like to contribute please come to me and let's discuss it. Thank you very much. Questions? You have questions? Questions, of course.
So what can you do with uh, privacy preserving uh, money like Monero and stuff like that? Uh, very good question, thank you. So, uh, uh, okay, so uh, it's a very good question and I will use this to introduce also the, the one of my ideas. So, uh, first, uh, let's try to answer the question. If uh, someone wants to, to uh, to transact uh, with Monero with me as a financial intermediary, I may ask him a view key, his view key, and he may reveal his history of transactions selectively, reveal it to me. Not to the entire world, but just to me. So the difference that I see in between like the, the good AML or the bad AML is the bad AML will try to outsource it to some kind of uh, external API that will provide a score of the transaction and say like 70% and me as a financial intermediary I have to decide am I going to accept this risk that I don't understand which is just expressed as a percentage yeah or the good AML where you come to me with something that went through a mixer I, I'm just supposed to ask you oh I see it went through a mixer could you provide me a certificate that proof your entries and outputs of these mixers so that I can continue my job of proving your transactions history. So if you wanted some privacy to the entire world, but you agreed to reveal to me to transact, it's perfectly legal and fine, okay? So uh, we don't want, and by the way, in the traditional finance, when you use the, the banking network, the banking network is not a public network, so nobody see uh, your history of transaction. You reveal it selectively to the people with whom you, with, to the financial intermediaries with whom you want to transact. So the same is absolutely possible with crypto, with Monero, with Zcash and any privacy preserving uh, coin. Any, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Give him a hand.